Duval, please unmute and state your name for the record, please. Jill Duval. All right, thank you. And today is the date scheduled for a jail review. On April 5th, Ms. Duval was sentenced to 30 days jail, suspended the jail review of today's date. The court did remove the tether at that time. And that was as a result of her plea on April, her sentence on her plea of attempt retail fraud. In addition to the jail review, there's also a probation violation where it's alleged that Ms. DeBell tested positive for marijuana on May 2nd of 2023. And counsel? Your Honor, I saw the recommendation on the jail review. I asked to be adopted. Thank you, Judge. Okay, and then what about as to the probation violation? Your Honor, it's a technical violation. We're not going to contest this. My client is saying she could have a hearing in which she could contest the results that will be necessary. Ms. DeBell, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or from the testimony about to give this man the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I'm sorry? I said yes. Okay, thank you. It came through muffled. All right. As to the allegation you just deposited for marijuana on May 2nd, how do you plead? Guilty. And you understand the recommendation on your violation is for you to continue and complete all terms of probation, pay a $50 probation violation fee, increase your testing, and serve five days jail. Do you understand that? Yes. And knowing all that, you still want to continue with your plea? I believe so. I mean, I tested positive for marijuana. I um, I haven't done it since uh, since I. Uh, We're ready to proceed, Judge. Okay, so, ma'am, you want to continue with your plea, correct? Yes. All right, counsel, if you could please do your claim. Yes, I'd like to direct your attention to May second, two thousand twenty-three. Did you take a test as a condition of probation and test positive for marijuana? Yes. Satisfied, Judge. I'd ask the recommendations to be adopted. Thank you. All right. The court is also satisfied the plea is knowing, voluntary, and factually accurate. The court will accept your plea to the probation violation, indicate technical violation number one. And ma'am, when did you use the marijuana prior to testing? Um, as soon as I got my medical marijuana card, I believe that and, was ma'am. Sorry. Okay. Let me ask you a few. Let me ask you a few questions. You do not sure. have that medical marijuana card prior to being placed on probation, correct? No, I did not. And so it was explained to you upon your, um, I guess, your submission of your card that you needed to have a note from your treating physician as to your medical, the medical necessity of your card and that there's been a treating relationship between you and the doctor, correct? Yes, uh, yes. yes. And so mm, your medical marijuana card at this point is not recognized by this court because we you're still missing one of the pieces that you need. Have you submitted that yet? No, I have not. I don't have an attending physician. I go to a residency center when I need medical attention. I see a different doctor every time I go. Okay, but you have a treating relationship with that center, correct? Yeah, the clinic. Okay, so is that clinic a medical marijuana clinic or like an urgent care type of clinic? Uh, no, it's called Monroe Relief Clinic. Um, it's just a, a, a clinic here in Monroe. Okay. Do they specialize in marijuana or is it more of a general practice? Um, marijuana. That is one of the reasons why this court, even given the recent case law, the court is still within its discretion to require you to have a treating relationship with the physician that's prescribing the medical marijuana to you because that's not something that you have prior to being placed on probation. Correct. And you are aware of that, ma'am, and yet you still um, 
decided to partake in marijuana? Yes, I use it for headaches, nausea, anxiety. Um, I was told by the clinic that if I had a card, I couldn't get in any trouble. But that that's just here in Monroe. I didn't realize in Wyandotte it's like that. Well, ma'am, the with all due respect to the medical clinic, they're not the judge that's presiding over your case. This court has oh. put an order in effect that says you're not to use any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed. Furthermore, if there is a prescription for marijuana because you didn't have one previously, that is why this court requires that next step to make sure there's a treating physician, there's a treating relationship between you and your physician that's requiring the marijuana, that's prescribing the marijuana. Mm -hmm. Yes. When you were sentenced, ma'am, you were under the care of a nurse practitioner. Where does that nurse practitioner work out of? Uh, she works out of the hospital. She she prescribes my antidepressants. Okay, so therefore, that is one of the reasons this court requires something from a medical professional that you have a treating relationship with, because marijuana does interact with various drugs. So um, you are prescribed. Five different medications. Yes. And the court also, in addition, when there is a history of substance use or um, controlled substance use, even if it's regulated by a doctor, there's still concerns that you're supplanting one addiction for another. The recommendation is for you to continue to put out terms of probation, safety dog probation violation, being increase your testing and serve five days jail. That's for this violation. And so the court is going to adopt that recommendation. So you need to report me on today for jail. What? I was under the under the impression that this jail sentence would be suspended. Well, let me clarify. So on your jail review, the recommendation was for your jail review to be adjourned for two months. On your probation violation, the recommendation is for five days jail. Um, I was under the impression that I wasn't going to have to go to jail. Ma'am, on your probation order, it indicates mandatory additional incarceration for any violation. And here we are for an additional, for a violation. <clears throat> the court already suspended your 30-day jail term that the court sentenced you to back in April. Well, um, I, I, if I go to jail, I'm going to lose my job of 10 years. Well, ma'am. <clears throat> your, your Honor, I would potentially request a, uh, a, um, a report date so that you could make the necessary arrangements. How much notice do you need to give to your employer, ma'am? I'm sorry? <clears throat> How much notice do you need to provide to your employer? If I tell them, if I, I, can, I have no, there's no way I could miss five days and keep my job. You don't have any paid time off. You've been there for 10 years. Yeah. Um, I've taken, I've had time off. Um, I, I don't have, I don't have five days to take. All right. Well, ma'am, let me just indicate this. You were charged with retail fraud. And you were given an amended charge of attempt retail fraud, despite having three prior retail fraud convictions on your record. The most recent one was December of 2021. Right. You, received a generous, you received a very generous plea. This court indicated at the time of sentencing in addition to some other conditions, 
incarceration, and we suspended that for a jail review. The court also indicated mandatory additional incarceration for any violation of probation. And here we are today on a violation of probation. You were put on notice, ma'am, that there's mandatory jail for any violation. Well, I didn't think I would be violently having a card. I, I didn't think I would be violating. I didn't I didn't know. I figured if I had a card in Monroe, they told me if I when I got it here and I know it's not the judge, you it's not you. But that's what I was told that I wouldn't be in any harm's way by by uh smoking marijuana. I mean, I I, I, with all due respect, I don't really understand why I'm on a, a alcohol or drug anything for retail fraud. Because that's one of the conditions this court placed. I, I am given, I given your history, ma'am, because yes. given your criminal history, given your substance use history, that is why. I don't have a substance abuse history. Ma'am, in your during your pre-trial, your pre-sentence investigation, it was indicated that you had previously been addicted to pain pills for three years. That was twenty and years. Ma'am, and you had attended outpatient substance use counseling in the past. Recent, oh, re, most recently, four to five years ago. And then given the fact that now there's another retail fraud, the court wanted to make sure that you were not continuing to consume any alcohol and drugs that were not prescribed that perhaps could have been a motivating factor for some of this. So. No. That is why the court ordered what it did. So the court will give you, what, what's your schedule, ma'am? I work three to three, 3 a.m. till 3 p.m. Uh, six days a week. Okay, well, <clears throat> you'll have to communicate with your employer and see if there are some days you can have off. I'll give you until Friday to report. I like I said, I don't know how I'm going to do that. It's impossible to pay my fines if I lose my job. I've paid five hundred dollars on my fine so far. Okay, ma'am. If you end up losing your job, you have to communicate with probation so they can adjust your payment plan and suspend your payments until you obtain a new job. Well, I'm not looking for a new job. I'm not ready to spoil my life. You, you're, you're, you're trying to ruin my life. Ma'am, with all due respect, I am not the one that consumed the marijuana and violated probation. I know, but it's not necessary for me to be on something like this. Everybody says it. It's not it's not just me. The ma'am, there could have certainly been an appeal of this court sentence, and there was not. So um, so the court's indicating five days jail. You need to report on Friday, June 9th. Contact probation your probation officer, and she'll give you the information as to how to report. As the jail review, the court will adjourn the jail review for two months to August 7th at 9.30 a.m. Anything else, counsel? No, you are. All right, anything else, ma'am? I just don't I just don't see why I'm going to lose my job of 10 years over this. Ma'am, this court put you on notice that there would be mandatory jail for any future violation. Yeah, I for a violation. Excuse me. Excuse me. You're here for a violation. You tested positive for marijuana. This court has not approved your marijuana use at this point. Therefore, the court is speaking through its written orders and it's five days jail. Like I said, I just, I don't understand why this is going to ruin my whole life over smoking some marijuana for, for something that, that makes me feel better when I am in pain. 
then ma'am, then you need to follow the court's directives as far as what's required in order for you to be able to use marijuana for medicinal purposes. Well, the if I get a note from the doctor that gave me the marijuana card, um, I was under the impression it isn't good enough. What, what do you, the one that gave you the medical marijuana card? Correct. You don't have a treating relationship with that person. You're you're you have a you have a treating relationship with a nurse practitioner that prescribes to you your other medication. Correct. Yes. Okay, then that would be the medical professional that you need to chat with. Okay. If I am to get a letter from a physician, would this suspend this five days jail? No, ma'am, because you didn't have one at that time. No. Please email into your probation officer by 1030. Thank you. Okay. You have a good day. We're going to be off the record. 20 years. No. Oh, my God. What a asshole. What the hell is a lawyer doing for you? Nothing. Nothing. Mr. Bell, you're still uh, you're still on you're still in court and you're not muted, so you need to sign off and email into your probation officer by ten thirty. Sign off. Okay, I don't I don't know. I'm not sure how to do that. Just tap your screen and hit leave meeting. Leave meeting. Court is calling 2023 CR 2279 State of Texas versus Roger Neek Jones. But I have parties announced for the record for the state. Lindsay Shaw. Defense. Angela Blake. Are you Ms. Jones? Yes, sir. Counsel, have you received all the discovery that you reviewed with your client? Yes, sir. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Ms. Jones, I'm showing you what's entitled application for deferred adjudication or community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, sir. Show you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? Yes, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand you're charged with the offense of possession of a controlled substance penalty group one, one gram of four grams. That's a third degree felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from two to 10 years in prison and up to $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state will call in the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe she has the rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against her? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe she's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Jones, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, ma'am. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, ma'am. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived her right to jury trial, showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. According to the plea bargain agreement, there's a thousand dollar fine. State recommends deferred adjudication. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, ma'am. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. State? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you the paragraph entitled waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, ma'am. Did you outside the agreement, the state is recommending that your deferred adjudication be for a term of four years? That'd be a tap evaluation 
and community service hours. Did you understand those are recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Yes, ma'am. Then to the offense as charged in the indictment, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. State any evidence? State Office State's Exhibit 1 and all attachments. No objection, Your Honor. All right, State, you may continue to confirm. Thank you, Jeff. Ms. Jones, I'm showing you what's entitled Waiver and Consent to Stipulation of Testimony and Stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Again, we'll find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments and review the same. <clears throat> After reviewing states exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty. The court will defer finding of guilt as you apply for deferred adjudication. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? We just ask that you follow the plea bargain, Judge. All right. In the police report, it mentions other warrants, a possession less than a gram in a theft case. Are those out of county warrants? Those are within Bear County. Those both been resolved. The felony was dismissed. The misdemeanor was also dismissed. All right. Do you have any children? I have three children, Your Honor. What are their ages? Um, 11, 8, and 3 years old. And where are they? They are currently with a family placement because I'm currently doing services um, to receive them back due to the charge that I received. And so what's your drug of choice? I currently don't have a drug of choice. I've well, I mean, sober. this was found in your bra. Why do you have meth in your bra? Yeah, it was, I've been sober. I did have it, but I went to alpha home. I did inpatient treatment. And so I have not been, but I did have it and I used to use it, but and when is the uh, when were you released from inpatient treatment and alcohol? Um, March thirtieth, and I'm still doing outpatient for my CPS um, for my CPS caseworker. I'm still doing outpatient classes and programs, um, but I was probably going to be going back to complete twenty eight more days just so it looks better in CPS in Children's Court. Who's your CPS attorney? Um, Miss Max. And who are you living with now? Uh, I live with my mother right now. Are you employed? Uh huh. What do you do? Wendy's. No, I don't know if I should say it or not. Wendy's burgers. I'm just. I I never could get used to the square. <laughs> and that's you know, how we that's how they pat them out before we freeze them because mm -hmm. you have to pat them out like that and they have like a little square thing that you put on it to make them like that i don't so know what why. happens to the rest of the meat do y'all just join it with other the rest of the meat they cook it and they put it in the chili oh okay i remember when wendy's first came to louisiana and you know that was a lot of money right so we go to wednesday wendy's because we're like can't go to Mr. Swift's, which was the burst burger place, even though it was in Grand Cane, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know why we thought McDonald's tasted good, but we go to Wendy's. We're spending our last little money on Win Wendy's. And I'm telling you, the fact that they ball, you know, they ball their burger. <laughs> Do y'all still ball the burger? No. Do you keep it? No, they don't boil them anymore. The Just, only they freeze them and then we take them out and put them on the grill. And then afterwards, if the meat is still in good condition, chop them up and they put them in the chili to okay. where it can be reused instead of throwing it away. The only thing that I've ever really liked from Wendy's was their, their spicy chicken sandwich and their chocolate frosty or whatever it's called. Those are literally both my favorites. <laughs> Although like. um, the chicken sandwich, I, I don't even do that anymore. I have bad memories of going on a ride <laughs> after having eaten that. <laughs> All right. This is what the court is going to do. The court is going to sentence you to three years deferred adjudication. Uh, regular reporting by Zoom or in person. Proof of employment within 15 days. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. How far did you go in school? Um, I'm still in school now. I'm enrolled in Penn Foster, but I'm about to stop doing that. To go All right, just one staff. second. Everyone, you need to whisper and do not talk in that jury box if you're behind the court reporter. <laughs>
but I, I currently just stopped my classes through Penn Foster so I can enroll in a program because my counselor at Alpha Home, she gave me a referral to where I can do uh, GD classes and start my college classes with SAC. So that's what I'm about to be doing. Okay. There's to be uh, regular UAs. Uh, probation, I'm going to need you to coordinate with CPS because I'm going to want treatment for her, but I need proof that you've completed Alpha Home. So was that inpatient? Uh -huh. All right. So I'm going to request inpatient treatment with Alpha Home, but I'll note that she's already completed it, but you're going to have to provide proof to probation, okay? Okay. Are you doing any sober meetings? I do that. That's why I'm still doing the outpatient with Alpha Home. I'm no longer there because my mom, like I take care of my mom as well. So I've been doing the outpatient, but I still meet with my counselor there. I still meet with my sponsor. I go to the Tuesdays, Thursdays, and the Friday meetings okay. every week. All right. So probation, she needs to provide proof to you that she's completed the inpatient. If she's completed the inpatient, then we're going to require her to continue with outpatient treatment through Alpha Home. Uh, we're going to do field visits one time per month. In probation, if you want to count the field visits as reporting, you can count it as reporting. And if you want to coordinate with CPS to make sure that they're doing visits and CPS does them, then those can count. Uh, CPS compliance. Uh, 300 hours of community service restitution. That will be satisfied once you've completed parenting classes in your GED. So in order to complete your 300 hours community service restitution, you need to complete the GED courses in your parenting course courses and probation that can be through CPS. Uh, probation, is there anything else she needs? No, you aren't. Is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? Um, no, ma'am. If you're under the court, assess a fine. We would just ask that the court. No, okay. I did not. Okay. Uh, yeah, don't breach. <laughs> you can't do that. You, you're just asking for trouble by doing that. <laughs> oh, just come around. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. All right, because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waived your right to appeal. You do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, we can go off the record. How old are you? I'm 26. All right, you're 26. You have three children. Mm -hmm. These three children are 100% dependent upon you. So, and only me. And only you. So, if you don't do what's required of you, what's going to end up happening is CPS is going to terminate your rights and they're going to end up who knows where with who knows who. I've done plenty of CPS cases, and what I can tell you is this. And you can take it and use it or not use it. Do not get involved in any relationships until your children are of age. And let me just tell you why I say that. Yes, this could be a hallmark moment where you meet some guy who's uh, working at Wendy's who comes in, and next thing you know, he's a corporate CEO. But that really only happens in hallmark. Or it can turn out to be a lifetime movie. I like children. I think children are great. But when you have children, they're suitcases. Think of them as suitcases. Yeah. The 11 year old is a suitcase, it's the eight year old, the three year old. And I'm not talking about carry on, they're check baggage. Mm -hmm. And then you're on probation. That's another suitcase. So any guy or partner you get with, you need to make sure that they're okay carrying those suitcases. And if they're not okay, you shouldn't be with them. I'm really just focused on myself. You should. The relationship is like, it's like the last thing. In my Thank mind. you. Like I'm really focused on my growth and what I need to do for myself and my kids. Because I don't want to just have a job. I want a career. I want to build stability. So when I'm gone, my kids have something. Like I don't want to just be that parent that their kids can't learn anything from. Because I was a young mom, but still that's no excuse. All right. I want you to remember what you said to me. So when you come back here, I expect all of that to be true. Okay. As my uh, mother, her teacher would always tell them, don't end up with some joker. <laughs> and my teacher in high school, Mr. Reed, would always tell us, don't end up with a joker. So don't end up with a joker, okay? Okay. All right, probation, we'll go over conditions with you.
And announce for the record for the state. Defense. Deborah Stantenberg for the defendant. And I'm wondering if the court has the letter that the defendant wrote to the court. Yes. I didn't know if you had a chance to read it. Yes. I Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Judge Boyd. Hello. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing great. It's a beautiful Friday. I'm well, it's not Friday, it's Monday. Monday. Yes, but you know the reason why I say it's a beautiful Friday? Because when you're off on Friday, Friday becomes a Monday and a Monday. All right. Uh, according to the, you entered a plea uh, to kidnapping of no contest on March 20th, 2023. According to the plea, punishment is to be assessed at 10 years in the prison. The state opposes your application. They're taking several cases into consideration. There's an affirmative finding of family violence. Have parties had a chance to review the PSI report? State? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. Any objections? State? No objections. Defense? No, Your Honor. Uh, state, any witnesses? Have one Defense, any witnesses? Other than the defendant, no. All right, would you like to, uh, are there witnesses? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, you want to call her? I thought it was for victim impact statement after sentencing. We will be calling her as a witness. I can't hear you, Mr. Burr. Yes, we will be calling her as a witness. All right, uh, call your witness. Yes. Your Honor, and I would expect her testifying to anything that we would consider to be a victim impact statement that should be presented to the court after the judge sentences. Okay. All right. Call your witness. Your Honor, we call Jennifer Tobar. All right, Ms. Tobar, if you come forward. Yeah, come up. Can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you get will be the truth and nothing but the truth will help you, God? Yes. All right, you can lower your hand. I'm going to need you to speak up so the court reporter can hear. State your name for the record. Jennifer Tovar. State. Um, Ms. Tovar, you are the um, victim in uh, this case uh, against Mr. Zaragoza. Yes, sir. And um, you are aware that he has applied for um, deferred adjudication and regulation? I am. And um, are you uh, are you in... What what are your feelings if the defendant were to be granted permission? Objection. Yeah. And what's your objections? He's telling you what effect your decision will have on her. And we don't want her influence. All right, that'll be sustained. Do you are you do you want the defendant to be released on probation? Objection, no. Your Honor. It's the same thing. Sustain. I'll ask the court to disregard, of course. Oh, yes. It's disregarded. Just one second, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Tovar, uh, on December 21st of 2021, can you tell the court what happened? Um. So I visited Ray for to pick up Christmas money because we, me and the kids were living in Atascosa County due to CPS case that we had for domestic violence. Your Honor, I object because it's repetitive. Everything about that offense is in the police report, which was presented to the court as part of our plea package. All right. So just so all parties are aware, I read the stipulations in its entirety. I always reread those before sentencing and I read them once I make a decision on whether there's sufficient evidence to find somebody guilty. And I've also read, thoroughly read the TAP evaluation. So uh, you can ask your next question. Yes. Um, Ms. Tor, have you had any contact with the defendant since these allegations? Yes, yeah, so he calls, he calls the house and speaks to myself and the kids. Um, I guess when he can, because he doesn't no, have any objection, non response. She answered his question. All right, that'll be overruled. Oh, so he um, he, he has to use, I guess, a free collect call that he has because he doesn't have any money on the account to call us. Okay. So, and I don't fund it anymore. I just did for a little while around Christmas time. But um, no, he's, only when he gets a collect call, he can call. And Ms. Tobar, do you currently have a protective order against the defendant? I do. And do you feel that is uh, that is sufficient to keep you safe? No. 
And why is that? Objection, Your Honor. What is your objection? She's commenting on what your decision will ultimately do to affect her and her children. All right, that'll be overruled. You can answer the question. Um, no, I don't think so. It didn't in the first place. It didn't. He was, Ray was still coming around and still calling. And um, while these cases were pending, you did have a no contact order against right. the correct? Right. But I was, I was, I thought, I was told that um, to let him talk to the kids. So even though we have a no contact order, I mean, that's why, you know, I was looking calls so that he could talk to the kids. I didn't want anybody to say that I wasn't allowing them. Yeah, because they're not part of the protective order. It's just, you know. Thank you. Nothing further, All right, defense? No question. All right, thank you. State, do you have another witness? No other witnesses. Yeah. Defense? Just the defendant himself. All right, if you'll come forward. Could you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, Your Honor. All right, you can lower your hand, state your name for the record. My name is Zadagosa Ray, the letter junior. All right, defense. Thank you. Mr. Tovar, did you want to address the court with regard to why are you requesting her to give you probation? Yes, I feel that uh, even probation, I could uh, complete probation. As you know, I haven't been in trouble before, Your Honor. This is the longest I've been in jail. I feel that I've made a mistake. And if you read uh, the current note I wrote to you, Your Honor, uh, it describes more of my feelings. I want to apologize to the court and I want to apologize to my wife. Who, uh, we've been together 11 years, 10 years. Been with the family 15 years. All I know is my family, Your Honor. And I'm asking for your leniency and your mercy, Ron, for probation and classes so I can better myself. Thank you. All right, state, any questions? Uh, yes, Your Honor, briefly. Um, Mr. Uh, Tolvar, yes, sir. Um, in this case, you're charged with a uh, violation of a bond of protective order, as well as a repeat violation of a uh, bond of protective order, in addition to the kidnapping, correct? I am? He was. I was. And um, given uh, that the, that there was a no contact order protecting Ms. Tovar um, from you, you violated those no contact orders. That is wrong. She came to my home and moved in with me because she had no place to live. I wasn't going to leave my wife and my kids out on the street. So I did not violate it. She came to me, and that's how I violated it. But you were made aware that any contact with Ms. Tovar would be a violation of those bond conditions, is that correct? I was aware, but I was not going to leave my kids and my wife out in the street, sir. Um, and um, in this uh, kidnapping case, you did tie up Ms. Tovar with duct tape, is that correct? No, that is incorrect. And... Um, you said you've never been in trouble before, but you did have a case out of Atascosa County, Texas, for a violation of uh, body protective order in, in that county as well. Isn't that correct? Uh, for phone calls for talking to my children, which I had uh, the right to do. And if you check the, the records, the, it says for electronic communication, I was allowed to talk to my kids. And you did a abscond during that case on February 9th of 2023. Is that correct? Is that you you just didn't do anything and you failed to report. Okay. I was in jail. Okay. It's not that I failed to report, it's just I couldn't go. Okay. I was in custody. Uh, I'm sorry. I said during that that incident, I was in custody, so I couldn't go over there. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Any further questions? No, Your Honor. All right, any other witnesses? No, Your Honor. All right, the court will hear argument. State, you're opposed? Yes, Your Honor. We're opposed um, to the defendant being granted probation. Um, while you heard from the victim that she does not feel protected just by the no contact order, and that the, the fact that he was charged with a repeat violation of court order bond condition twice, um, which are being taken into consideration in, these off in this offense, Your Honor, um, shows that the defendant, whether or Whatever the allegations were, completely disregarded the court's order um, and 
telling him that he's not supposed to have any contact with the complainant. But uh, what about his saying that she came to live with him? But you, Your Honor, regardless of what the allegations are, if he, if he knew that he had these charges pending. No, I, I understand that. But isn't that mitigating the fact that she chose to go and live with him? Now, I understand financially there are issues, but a no contact order, of course, it's a document. It's on paper. And the defendant knows they're not to have contact with them. But what about his saying that he had a choice? Either his children were going to be on the street with her or either she was going to come and live with him. But it doesn't appear in that situation, if it's truthful, he didn't go and have her come live with him. She decided to go live with him. That is correct, Your Honor. And while it may be mitigating there, knowing that he did have that no contact order, there are other options for Mr. Tovar to be able to take care of his children without having contact with the complainant. Um, you know, he could have taken the children while Ms. Tovar went to go find another living arrangement. Do you know she wanted him to take the children and leave without her children? That I'm not aware of, Your Honor. Okay. Um, but given that, and um, given the allegations in this case, Your Honor, we don't feel that the, uh, we do, I'm sorry, we do feel that the defendant is a danger to Ms. Tovar if she, if he were to be granted probation. Um, and so we'd have that you uh, deny the defendant's application. To All right, defense. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes. As you know from reading the pre-Senate report, my client doesn't have an extensive criminal history. These offenses, <clears throat> although serious, have really made him take a step back to reassess his life and how he lives his life and how he treats his family. And I think he's expressed rather eloquently in the letter that he tendered to the court He's going to do whatever it takes to fix himself. Not even he's even read the PSI where the recommendations on the uh, happy valve that if granted probation, he should be placed in a <clears throat> program to help make sure he's no longer drinking excessive amounts of alcohol, and he wants to fix himself in that way. And he's been taking some classes in the jail since he's been in jail. It's been a couple of months now to help him control his demeanor, his anger, everything. He's trying to fix himself. Okay. All right. This is what the court is going to do. The court is going to deny your application, find you guilty, sentence you to nine years in the prison, give you credit for any time served, take in consideration 2022 CR 7416, 2023 CR 1300, County Court Cause Number 698311. There's an affirmative finding of family violence. There's a $1,500 fine, time and money run concurrent, and there is to be no contact with Jennifer Tovar. Showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Because this yes, is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Yes, also, because you. this is a felony conviction, and also because there's an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right, we can go off the record. You're going to have to make better decisions in your life. Yes, Your Honor. This is just a mistake, Your Honor. I wish. Well, no, it, it was a choice, and it was a bad choice. Yes, Your Honor. And here's the thing. I understand about protective orders. I understand that sometimes uh, the person who the protective party is supposed to protect, they decide that they're going to go live with the person that there's a protective order against. And then there's an issue that happens and then everybody calls the police and here we are. Yes, so ma'am. when you have a protective order, you are the person who are responsible. And if somebody wants to come live with you and there's a protective order in place, you need to say no. Do you understand? I do now, Your Honor. Well, I mean, you knew beforehand. You just decided, eh, maybe we can work this out. Here's the thing. She doesn't want you anymore. That relationship is over. You can consider her on paper. Unless y'all got a divorce, she's still your wife. But in reality, she's not your wife anymore. She does not want to be with you. Do you understand? Do not call her from the jail. Do not call her from the prison. Do not contact her. And if you want to see your children, and uh, Ms. Burke does a lot of civil work, if you want to see your children, then that needs to be done through a third party, but it's not to be done through Miss Tovar. It's like you don't even know her. Do you understand? Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Christopher Reyes. All right, we have to come in back. All right, that'll be it then. Christopher Reyes. Yes. 